In this problem, we will do a sample size calculation. Here's our scenario. Suppose a borough with a population of 3,512 residents is interested in estimating the proportion of residents that attend church on a weekly basis. They would like their estimate to be within 5% at a 95% confidence level. What sample size is needed to ensure their estimate will be within 5% of the true population? Let's first revisit the formula for the confidence interval for P. That is equal to P hat plus or minus a Z critical value times the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat over N. What does it mean when the borough says they want their estimate to be within 5% at a 95% confidence level? That means that they want this term of the confidence interval, which has a special name, the margin of error. They want the margin of error to be less than or equal to 0 0.05. So let's write the inequality that we want. We want z star times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n to be less than or equal to 0 0.05. We are solving, we want to solve this inequality for n. Do we know our other quantities? Well, z star for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. Do we know p hat? p hat is the sample proportion that we would get after taking a random sample of size n from the population and calculating the sample proportion. We don't know what that sample proportion will be, so how do we continue? It turns out that if we put in 0.5 for p hat, this numerator will be at its greatest value as a function of p hat. So if we put in 0.5 for p hat, we will be sure that regardless of what the true p hat is, our sample size that we calculate will give us a margin of error of less than 0.05. Let's look at a graph to show you why putting in 0.05 maximizes the numerator. If you graph the function square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat, you get a function that looks like that. That function is maximized when p hat equals 0.5. So putting 0.5 in as the numerator is the most conservative approach you can get. You will get a sample size larger than you need if your true proportion is anything other than 0.5. So let's do that for this problem. Plugging our values into the inequality, we have 1.96 times the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by n is less than or equal to 0 0.05. We need to rearrange our inequality to get n by itself. Rearranging our inequality, we find that n has to be greater than or equal to 384.16. So how many people should the borough sample to ensure that their margin of error will be less than 0.05, less than 5%. We have to decide whether they should sample 384 or 385. If they sample 300, 384 individuals, their margin of error will be slightly greater than 0.05. They have to sample an integer number of people, so we're deciding between 384 and 385. 384 won't do it. The borough must sample at least 385 people to ensure a margin of error of less than 0.05. To see this, if we write our margin of error with a sample size of 384 and a p hat of 0.5, we see that our margin of error is greater than 5%. Using a sample size of 385, however, our margin of error is less than 5%. So if you need to do a sample size calculation for P in a confidence interval problem, use 0.5 as your estimate for P hat. Any other value of P hat which you might get in your sample will be fine. Your sample size that you calculate will ensure that your margin of error will still be within the limits that you wanted it.